Hello everyone and welcome back to Private Pilot Ground School. I'm Sergey and in this video we'll be talking about aerodynamics and what makes an airplane fly. So you want to know how an airplane flies? Well, spoiler alert. Don't need to know about aerodynamics, just have a little bit of this and you can make any sort of airplane fly. On a more serious note, there is a lot of terminology in this video, so make sure you get out your pen and paper and start writing it down. It'll help you remember the terms and what they mean a lot better than just watching the video. You will need to know all these terms, not only for your practical test, but for your written test and just in general if you want to be a pilot. So get ready and start writing. There are four forces that act on an airplane in flight. They are lift, drag, weight, and thrust. Lift is an upward force created by the wings. Drag is all the parts of the airplane sticking out into the airflow and resisting the forward motion. Weight is the weight of the airplane being pulled towards the center of the earth. And thrust is provided by the propeller to propel the airplane forward through the air. During straight and level unaccelerated flight, the thrust is equal to the drag and the lift is equal to the weight. And straight unaccelerated means that the airplane is not climbing or descending, it's not in a turn, and it's not speeding up or slowing down. So straight and level unaccelerated flight, lift equals uh, weight and thrust equals drag. If you get more lift, the airplane will climb. If you reduce the lift, it'll descend. If you add more thrust, it'll go faster. And if you reduce the thrust, it'll go slower. Also, if you stick your hand out the window, it'll technically create more drag, which will slow you down by a little bit. In the mid-1700s, there was a physicist and a mathematician named Daniel Bernoulli, and he noticed that if you take a fluid and you accelerate it through what's known as a venturi, or a tightened gap, the speed and the pressure of that fluid will change. And fluids can be liquids, they can be gases, so if you take a fluid and you send it through a venturi, what will happen is the pressure will drop and the speed will increase. And this is what they call the Bernoulli's Principle. What does this have to do with airplanes and aerodynamics? Well, an airplane wing is shaped like half of a venturi. It's curved at the top and flat at the bottom. And that curved part accelerates the air over the top. And as I said before, if the speed of the air increases, the pressure decreases. So we have low pressure on the top and a high pressure on the bottom. You can think of it as a vacuum cleaner on top and like a leaf blower on the bottom. And that forces the wing in the upward direction. And that's the basis of how lift is created. Now let's talk about the terminology of the wing. First of all, if you look at a cross section of the wing, that special shape that's curved at the top and mostly flat at the bottom is what we call an airfoil. The front part of the airfoil is what we call a leading edge. The very back is the trailing edge. And there is an imaginary line that connects the two of them and we call that the cord line. Now I know this sounds like a lot of terminology that you'll never use, but just wait, it's coming up in just a few minutes. The curvature of the wing is what we call camber. And typically the top of the wing is more curved than the bottom, and this helps with the differences in pressure and helps produce lift. On aerobatic airplanes though, the top and the bottom surface are curved almost the same so that the airplane can fly and produce lift upside down as well as right side up. Now if you're following along so far, you understand that there's low pressure on the top of the wing, high pressure on the bottom, and the wing goes up because the pressure put pushes it up. Now on aerobatic airplanes I said the curvature is the same on both sides so if the curvature is the same what would that mean for lift generation? There wouldn't be any lift because the pressures would be the same since they're curved the same. And this is where angle of attack comes in. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line that we talked about and the relative wind. Relative wind is the airflow opposite of the flight path. It's not necessarily where the airplane is pointed or the front of the wing. If you're descending, your flight path is downwards. So your relative wind is coming from the bottom and not necessarily from the front. Now if you're flying straight ahead and that's your flight path, relative wind will be from the front. So back to the angle of attack between the cord line and the relative wind. This angle determines how much lift you get. The bigger the angle, the more lift. And as the angle increases, it creates a higher difference in pressure, which means more lift.
As with anything, there's always a limit. In this case, it's what we call the critical angle of attack. Once we get to this critical angle, the wing can't produce lift, and if we exceed it, the wing will stall or stop producing lift. For an airplane to keep producing lift, the airflow on top and on the bottom must follow the wing. So in other words, it has to be right next to the wing surface on top and the bottom. As you keep increasing the angle of attack, when you get high enough, the air stops being streamlined and it starts developing turbulence or eddies, little pockets of turbulence. If you increase the angle high enough, the low pressure that used to be on the top won't be there anymore because the air is not streamlined and the lift will be reduced completely to the point where the wing will stop flying. Now the only way to get the wing to fly again or to produce lift is to decrease the angle of attack to the point where the airflow is streamlined again and the airplane can fly. This critical angle of attack will stay the same regardless of how heavy you are, how fast you're going, how high you are, what attitude you're in, whether you're turning or climbing or descending. As long as you exceed the critical angle of attack, the wing will stall. So you could be descending and you can stall the airplane, even though your speed might be fast. And this is why buzzing somebody's house is a bad idea. As you're coming down, your flight path will be down, which means your relative wind will be in the up direction. As you get to their house, let's say you level off, now your flight path is still going down, your relative wind is still coming up, but now your wing and your cord line is level. That angle of attack can be increased to the point where the wing will stall, even though you are level, and you will end up crashing the airplane. So don't do that, that's bad. Also it's dangerous and illegal, so don't do that. But if you increase the angle of attack past the critical angle, the airplane wing will stall no matter which way you're going. As long as that angle of attack gets exceeded, you will stall the airplane. During flight training, you will practice stalls, how to get into them, how to get out of them, mainly how to get out of them. You don't want to intentionally get into one. And this will help you understand how a stall works, what to expect when you see one, and how to recover. That's the most important part. And why do we do it? Well, every year there are accidents that happen because people get into a stall and they can't recover and they end up running into the ground and usually it results in bad things. Speaking of, there will be a link in the description where you can watch uh, Colgan Air Flight 3407 and that will help you understand why we emphasize stalls and stall recovery. So how do aerobatic airplanes produce lift when they're upside down or right side up? They change the angle of attack and when they're upside down the angle of attack is on the top. When they're right side up the angle of attack happens to be on the bottom of the wing and if you increase the angle you get more lift, if you decrease it you get less lift. And so whether upside down or not, you get lift on whatever side you want based on your angle of attack. 